This is your WCIA3 forecast first. A little bit of rain showing up in far southern Illinois here tonight. A few little sprinkles here and there. Otherwise, the cloud cover is around for many of us. Uh, temperatures, though, actually, boy, it felt really good out there tonight with readings into the 60s. Hey, tonight, maybe open up the windows, allow some of that cooler air in. Humidity levels low as well. Out the door tomorrow, may find a few spotty showers starting out into the lower 60s to begin the day. Find our way back up into the 70s for high. So how long does the rain stick around this week? And when do these temperatures start to feel a little more June-like? We'll talk about that coming up. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. City Council members honoring Champaign Police Officer Chris Oberheim. What's being done to remember this hometown hero? Plus, it's a new way to get tested for the coronavirus. Who's eligible and how that really works? Plus, a lot was done at the Capitol last night, but a few things did fall short. What's headed back to the drawing board? You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Officer Chris Oberheim served with pride as a patrol officer and a member of the Special Weapons and Tactics SWAT team. The area on its and today, a city council voted to honor that officer. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hageman. Jessica has the night off. The Champaign City Council voted to honor a fallen officer killed in the line of duty. WCI3's Bryce B. Mint joins us live. Now, Bryce, you attended tonight's meeting, and will this new resolution accomplish much? The resolution passed will name a portion of University Avenue in honor of Officer Chris Oberheim. City of Champaign Police Officer Christopher Oberheim, who lost his life while serving as a member of the City of Champaign Police Department. Champaign City Council voted 9-0 to zero to honor Officer Chris Oberheim. Chris Oberheim will be greatly missed by his beloved wife, Amber Oberheim, his four daughters, Avery, Addison, Aubrey, and Hannah. Officer Oberheim was shot and killed in the line of duty last month. And now, the council is voting to rename a portion of University Avenue between Neal and Chestnut Streets to Honorary Christopher Oberheim Avenue. Officer Chris Oberheim possessed a great love for his community and his work. Oberheim served the Champaign community for 13 years. During that time, he earned two medals of valor for his bravery. Each member of the city council does express deepest sympathy and offer condolences to the family of Officer Chris Oberheim and his fellow officers and colleagues. The city also has two honorary street designations, one for Champaign officer Thomas Dodworth. He was shot and killed in the line of duty in 1913 and one for Officer Robert Tatman. He was fatally shot back in 1967. In the newsroom, I'm Bryce Beeman, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Bryce, thank you so much tonight. And another big item on the agenda was Amtrak funding. The city council passed a resolution for federal funding for additional train services to Champaign. The train will go from Chicago to Carbondale, stopping at the Illinois terminal there. Well, starting today, people in Macon County can actually reach out to first responders by 911. They say while calling is best, there might actually be times that it's too dangerous to talk. However, they are reminding people not to use abbreviations in a lot of those text messages if they have to use it. New tonight at 10, Springfield police are investigating after a teenager was shot Saturday night. That happened at South 13th and Cass Streets. Police say a 16-year-old was shot in the leg. He is expected to survive. They also saw people run into a nearby home and later found a gun that was stolen from Missouri. Well, now for an update on a teenager charged with murder and attempted murder. A million-dollar bond was actually sent for 19-year-old Richard Kleekamp. He's accused of shooting two teenagers in Taylorville last week. One of those teenagers did, in fact, die. A Danville man will spend 50 years in prison for murdering another man. In March, a Vermillion County jury found 21-year-old Deontay Bright guilty of murdering 23-year-old Albert Gardner. In June of 2018, Bright shot and killed Gardner at the Untouchables Motorcycle Club in Danville. Bright ran from the scene and was later arrested in Indianapolis. Well, the push for a clean energy bill fell apart in Springfield. Governor Pritzker pushed that phase out to phase out fossil fuels by 2035, but he couldn't get it done. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell reports from Springfield. The clean energy deal was designed to kill the coal industry slowly. 
over a period of 14 years. But as you might expect, that industry is fighting hard to stay alive as long as it can. That would be huge for my district. Chris Belt is one of several Senate Democrats to raise concerns about closing the Prairie State coal plant. There's all the, the skilled labor and all the employment opportunities that come along with Prairie State. So that would be a huge financial uh, impact, negative impact on my whole district. Both for the jobs it provides and the electricity it sells to cities all across Illinois. The village of Rantoul has a contract with Prairie State where they essentially will have to purchase out to about 2040. If those coal plants go offline before the local contracts are up, certainly you would see electrical bills go up for those communities. The capital city runs its own coal plant at City Water, Light, and Power. Springfield, Illinois, their entire electric grid deals with coal. What are these people going to do when you can't flip the lights on in the state capitol building? That's where late concerns in the Senate derailed a clean energy deal Monday night, where the House... We were close, uh, and uh, we're going to continue to work on it. ...and the governor were both on board. You know, my hope is that we're, we'll end up with a good energy bill. But now... The last I heard, the carbon tax was not in the last round of negotiations. Governor Pritzker's plan to tax polluters is out after Senate President Don Harmon stepped in. I have led the charge on renewable energy and against fossil fuel for my entire time in the Senate. But the coal industry may have a close ally in his chief of staff. State records show Jake Butcher was a paid lobbyist for Prairie State just last year. The notion that I am somehow holding up uh, an energy bill on behalf of a fossil fuel provider is laughable. The transition to clean energy will come with a cost, but the question remains, who will foot the bill? Should it be the taxpayers somewhere down the road, or should we put it with the same people making record profits, uh, in this case the polluters? Late Tuesday, still no energy deal in Springfield. Lawmakers in the House and Senate may very well return later this summer to finalize one. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell. And also out of session, a bill that could create a new registration class for small trailers has passed. This applies to trailers that weigh 2,000 pounds or less. The bill lowers the licensing fee from $118 to $36. Fees were increased in 2019 as part of the state's Rebuild Illinois plan. And recess will now be mandatory at public schools statewide. It also bans teachers from taking recess away as a form of punishment. And some who voted against it were concerned how it could affect how school days were structured, including complaints from school districts on the financial cost of hiring a recess supervisor. Here's a look at the state's latest coronavirus numbers tonight. A little more than 400 new cases were announced just today, and eight more people have died. The positivity rate has dropped below 2%. More than 17,000 people were vaccinated yesterday. The seven-day average is more than 45,000. More than 5.2 million people are now fully vaccinated in the state of Illinois. The Shield CU COVID-19 program has expanded to all community members who are at least eight years old. It's a free, non-invasive, saliva-based testing service. Results are available within about 12 hours. If someone does test positive, they'll get access to OSF Healthcare COVID-19 solutions. They'll have the option to receive care virtually or in person. I think it's important to note that, you know, although um, vaccines are becoming more widely available and more uh, widely accepted, testing is still going to be um, very important to keeping uh, this pandemic in control and getting us back to a normal state. And testing will be at the State Farm Center this week. You can stop by Thursday and Friday anytime from 8 to 4. On Saturday, it's from 8 to noon. And Sunday is from 10 until 2 o'clock there. Well, Illinois golf has made it to the Elite Eight several times, but can they go any further? Uh, Sayo is headed for the NBA draft, but first, he's being drafted by something else. And Kevin, we're keeping an eye on some summer-like conditions this weekend, but we are tracking some changes in the forecast. Yeah, changing things up after a kind of cool weekend here, but those warmer temperatures are coming so those of you that like the cooler weather and those of you who want the warmer weather now we're kind of getting everybody satisfied sure here with this uh, let's look outside here tonight for america adams memorials camera state farm center out there uh, lit up and uh, looking pretty good when we come back more about the rain returning the storm chances that could go along with it and when those temperatures fire back to near 90 coming up